whilst the entire wild population of Asiatic lions is confined to just one small area, that population is at risk from any kind of biological, man-made or climatic catastrophe. Any major disaster within the gear could wipe out the entire subspecies in one single stroke. So, without the possibilities of translocation, the gear lion is still very much at risk. But before they can even talk about translocation, the rangers first have to make a proper census of the population. Monitoring these last representatives of a species that once roamed across three continents is a difficult task, made all the more challenging by the presence of tribal communities competing with the lions for the land's precious resources. While the lion population within the gear has increased since its establishment, the actual national park itself has not been extended since 1978 and it's highly unlikely that it'll ever be enlarged because of human habitation around its periphery. Now this has led to lions wandering out of the sanctuary and into nearby agricultural lands. Now the only prey that they can feed on is of course livestock and this has led to increased hostility towards the lions. The most pressing goal of the conservation work here is to instill a sense of value and responsibility for the lions in the minds of the Maldari, the tribal villagers whose homes are scattered throughout the periphery of the reserve. The Maldari are a community of nomadic cattle herders whose ways of life were changed dramatically by the establishment of the Gear Sanctuary. Where previously they crossed the land seasonally with their livestock, they've been forced to settle on allotted areas and take up agriculture as an alternative means of livelihood. Many left the area and have moved to land further north of Gear, but others chose to stay and it's these tough settlers that the wildlife department is focusing their awareness efforts on. The welfare of the wildlife in Gear must not appear to be at the expense of human well-being and so the authorities are ensuring that the local population becomes more involved in the conservation activities within the area. One of the most crucial initiatives enforced by the Wildlife Department is the maintenance and protection of the lion's prey animals that live in the Gear region. Many of these have been almost wiped out by poaching and overzealous hunters. But in order to contain and minimize the human-lion conflict, their numbers have to be re-established and maintained. One such effort is taking place on the plains of nearby Velavada. These are the fabled black bucks of India, the world's fastest animal over long distances, reaching and maintaining speeds of up to 50 miles an hour. Before the population was almost wiped out, these antelopes were a significant part of the lion's diet. An intensive protection plan has brought them back from the brink and the sanctuary here is strictly guarded. In relative safety, the animals here are less wary of humans and the dynamics of their social structure are much easier to observe. The center of each herd is the male black buck, jealously guarding his harem from rivals. Adult males spend most of their time harassing the female, herding them back and forth over the savannah. But they must wait three years for this privilege. It's only at this age that they cultivate their glossy black and white coat. Until then, the younger males hang out in a loose bachelor group, testing out each other's strengths and weaknesses and establishing a hierarchy that will last throughout most of their lives. For now, however, this male is in the prime of his life and will pester as many females and subordinate males as he likes. Emerging from the heat haze, a curious animal steps out of the grass. This is a blue bull, or nilgai as it's known locally. Habitat loss has been the number one threat to the species. Fortunately, the locals consider it to be a sacred animal and don't value it for trade or consumption. This dark colored male is uneasy, not because of any threat. Pound for pound, he's one of the most powerful animals around but because he's in the presence of a herd of lighter colored females. His behavior suggests that at least one of them is in breeding condition. Almost 60% of all Nilgai birds are twins and there may be a few within this small herd. They finally become independent, which is why their mother seems to be responding to the male's attention. In the gear too, breeding season is in the air for the Nilgai. 
While these two younger males patrol the forests in search of likely mates, this huge male, his neck carrying the scars of previous duels with rivals, has found a receptive female with a young calf in tow. But he's acting very cautious, reacting to the slightest sound or scent. And he's got every reason to be on edge. Across the plains, the rangers have found their first evidence for the day of the lion's presence. The footprint was made less than an hour ago, and they fan out into the surrounding scrub to find any other sign of the lions. Limited resources make this the only real way in which the rangers can make confirmed sightings of the resident lions. Of course, they don't take risks. Experience gives them a few clues about the lions' movements long before they see them. Their daily patrols are called beats, and the rare observations they make of the prides here have helped to build a better picture of their status. The beat this morning has paid off. Hidden beneath the shade of a stand of thorn trees, a pride of Asiatic lions stirs in the heat. The Asiatic lion is quite a different animal from its African cousin. For one thing, it's far shaggier, with a denser coat and more prominent elbow and tail tufts. The Indian lion also has a distinct fold of skin along its belly, which is absent in the African species. Two females and one male cub make up the family. They're about a year old and still retain the spotted coat characteristic of young lions. If they make it to adulthood, the females will become part of one of the most formidable teams in nature, the pride of lionesses. But the male has a very different future in store for himself. As soon as he matures, he will be forced out of the pride, destined to spend his life as a loner. If they're strong enough, males will take control of the pride, but it's usually a short-lived reign. There'll always be another younger, fitter male around to take it all away from them. But that's all a long way off for this young cub. He'll enjoy the protection of his mother and aunt for some time to come and spend his days resting and playing with his sisters. As the heat of midday begins to die off, the two lionesses take their cue to start moving. Everyone is reluctant to interrupt their siesta, but eventually they're on the move. The afternoon sun finds the family out in the open, and the cubs are in a playful mood, much to the annoyance of the big females. The young male begins to show some interest in the ranger's jeep. His curiosity is more of a risk to the team than to himself, but someone else is far from impressed by his explorations. The cub's aunt is not about to let him get close to the rangers, so she tracks him down and gives him a piece of her mind. There's a lot stacked against this young family's survival, and the threat is not from hunting anymore. The effects of a severely reduced population and habitat are now becoming apparent. There's another hidden threat facing the lions at year, and that's infant death. Recent research has put this as high as 70% infant mortality within their population. Now scientists have put this down to inbreeding, the classic problem associated with a small, isolated population of animals. So, even the cubs that we tracked in the field earlier still have a very uncertain future ahead of them. Plans are now underway to establish a new sanctuary for the Asiatic lion, thereby increasing their range and the species' genetic pool. So a lot rests on the fate of this young male and his siblings to ensure the survival of this magnificent species. The truth of the matter is, if the rulers of the area hadn't taken the initiative early in the last century, the gear lions would most likely have disappeared many years ago. The results of their conservation efforts lie in the 300 lions that roam today in the Gear Forest. <laughs>